ALIF is a newly created international organization based in Geneva. We operate as a fund and we financially support cultural heritage initiatives in conflict areas as well as in countries coming out of a crisis situation. The Museum of Raqqa Restoration Project came to us through a French NGO, La Guilde Européenne de Red. They had been in Raqqa in December 2018 and they, at the museum they met a group of young professionals who were working there cleaning the museum that had been badly damaged by the war and through the occupation by Daesh. La Guilde Européenne and this group, Ruya, they worked on the museum in the last year and a half and they restored the building. The citizens of Raqqa were very proud of their museum. For them, this was a place that, uh, that reflected their identities, the identities of the various communities that were living there. It reflected the long history um, of habitation in the region. Um, so for them, restoring the museum is a symbol of recovery, of revival of a place that has suffered greatly from, from the war. To restore cultural heritage in conflict areas, for Alif it's not only about uh, re re restoring and rehabilitating stones, but it is really about rehabilitating uh, those places that mean something, restoring the minds and hearts of the people. I have a lot of admiration for all the people who uh, work and operate in these countries and their, their mission is to protect the heritage. Um, they do this in very complicated circumstances, even during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, they continue with the work, they're doing fantastic work and we have all the admiration. And... So Fight for Humanity is implementing uh, an emergency project with the local authorities. It really uh, has two, two key elements. So one is to work to uh, protect a historical site, uh, the Nabada Palace, um, that has uh, been suffering, especially from the weather conditions. Uh, and the other part of the project is linked to um, uh, artifacts uh, that have uh, partially been um, recovered from uh, archaeological missions. Uh, another part that has been um, captured um, from smugglers that the local uh, security forces have um, captured. So these are about 3,000 items that are in protected places where the conditions are not good. Um, so the, the part of this project is really to intervene, to stabilize and to make sure that the situation doesn't deteriorate. Um, the context is still complicated, but the conditions for working are actually improving. So this is kind of a first step um, towards uh, further work on, on this issue with the local authorities. So cultural heritage in Syria and in particular also in northeast Syria has been affected by the conflict in, uh, in many ways. Um, first, the conflict itself, um, the fighting, the bombings have affected uh, historical sites, cities. Uh, but also uh, some armed actors have been particularly targeting, uh, like ISIS have been targeting um, cultural heritage, um, so d destroying uh, deliberately. Uh, also uh, there has been um, theft and the smuggling of, of cultural artifacts, uh, both for financing the conflict but also regular criminality. So basically the, the, uh, the lack of law and order in the area has put uh, cultural heritage also at risk, not just the conflict. Cultural heritage um, can be um, can serve peace building, in fact, in a very very concrete way. And uh, how is this? So um, it depends on the, um, the perception you have of human nature. So we can think that people are all very bad, or we are very good, but actually we are somewhere in between where we could do both good and bad things. And actually we have um, mechanisms, um, the way we function, that we are very social and we are very capable of building bonds. And sometimes this, uh, it's good for, for um, 
living and working together, functioning together. But our capacity to build bonds can also be served in a negative way when people and communities are pitted against each other. People are pushing for violence against another group. Um, so the strength of cultural heritage is actually of culture. Uh, it's also to go back to what we have in common, the, the commonalities between people, our um, shared identities and treasures, and to build on this for creating joint identities instead of, of um, separating people. We have seen, um, particularly in, in northeast Syria, uh, the commitment of the authorities uh, to, to work to protect uh, cultural heritage. And we find that this is something really that we can build on, but we think that there's still a need to, to work more with, uh, with communities, with, uh, with uh, actors, to, to make sure that, the, um, uh, that there is an interest, there is a commitment to protect cultural heritage, because of course when people um, don't have food, um, if there's something you can sell that has value, um, is an opportunity. Um, so that's where uh, I think um, the local actors can step in and also um, work to explain, to advocate uh, for the, the need to treasure these, these things for future generations. So maybe sometimes the protection of cultural heritage seems like something very technical. Um, the, the processes, the methods, um, the, the, the ways of going about it, uh, but it's also something very, uh, very fundamental. Cultural heritage is a link between us and the past, and cultural heritage can also be a link between different peoples.